I talk to you every night, okay, I promise. Last week, I put up a YouTube video of me becoming financially free all over again in seven days flat. It got quite a lot of media attention and a heck of a lot of questions and comments. So this is part two where I answer all of the comments and show you some of the figures and deals that I secured. You're fucking pumped. We just left this family stripped from all his wealth. I haven't quite got you that much. To dive in this wild adventure. What are we doing? Let's get down the business. I've been stripped from everything, so I'm starting all over again from scratch. I've been dumped into a random city. Sheffield! You're gonna be using an alias name? I think you made it really hard for yourself. I probably wouldn't do it. If I haven't made any money in the next seven days, I will be evicted from my hotel and be on the streets. We just nibble on them for the week. I've got 50 pounds in my pocket for basic essentials. I've not eaten today at all. It'll be in the bag. But I need to start building my property portfolio again from scratch with nothing. Let's see what happens. Within two weeks, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm documenting everything. This is the Financial Freedom Challenge. Hey, I am in Sheffield as Samuel Leeds, and I'm just going to go and go around the apartments that I secured. And I'm going to show you around and give you some details of the figures and things like that. So I'm with my mate Alistair. Hey, you alright? A company left. Hey, you're right. Alistair is the cleaner. Awesome, high five. Thanks so much. Thank Have you. a wonderful stay. Lucas Penthouse, baby. I was gonna do a Winners Wednesday interview and I was gonna dress back up as Luke, Lucas and do a whole thing, but believe it or not, I lost my wig. Uh, I think I threw it away after the challenge and said, I never want to see that wig again. Um, but then um, I did want it back after all for memory's sake, but I can't find it. So I'm actually just here, I'm at the penthouse. Looking around it, and you know what? It's fabulous. We've got bookings coming in like crazy, and I thought I'd answer some questions that people asked on the group around the figures and about some of the detail of what happened. So I'm also with my good friend and also a success student, Alistair Cunningham. Hey, what do you think of the apartment, bro? It's stunning. It's it is nice, isn't it? Yeah. So two apartments. You've seen. We've got five people. Yeah. Coming just today. Um, to, to rent the property, and the rooms are renting out really well. In the big rooms, and it's, do you know what? It's immaculate. It's really yeah. good condition, really good, uh, well decorated, um, well dressed as well. Can you believe I found this so quick? No. Should we go through some of the questions? Yeah, I might get you, because you've also, Alistair, um, you've done quite a lot of service accommodation, you've done rent to rent, you've done all kinds of stuff, so mm -hmm. you maybe can chip in. So let's have a little look and see what some of these questions are. Um, so. Really, something interesting happened. A lot of people were saying um, that it was unfair because I ha uh, the challenge was unfair because I had the knowledge. <laughs> well, well, wasn't that the whole point? I think, yeah, it kind of was, wasn't well, it? I'm sure that was the whole point of the uh, the challenge was to prove that if you've got the correct knowledge, yeah, yeah. without the money, you can still yeah. see. If you haven't got the knowledge, or the money, or the inclination, all the time, then yeah, you, you'll fail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can do it without the money, but you need to have other stuff kind of going for you. In which my case, it was the knowledge. So yeah, understand. those questions I don't quite understand. So someone said, uh, Tony um, Grisdale said, "Did you pre-warn the letting agent that you intended to use the property as a rent to rent before you met at the property?" Uh, yes, absolutely. I don't know what you do, but I always say up front. You know, this is how I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be renting it out, yeah. corporate let. So yeah, all the front. Yeah, to be honest, yeah. Front. And I've actually got the contract. I've got the corporate let agreement in my car as well. Key safe has been installed. Some, someone was asking about key safe. So yeah. I think the biggest thing for me is system, systems with service departments is systems. This is my first time at the property since it's been live. Mm. But having good cleaners. Yeah. What, what do you think of that? What do you cleaner, think? hundred percent. Um, you need to have good cleaners, you need to have good systems like people in the building. And like for instance, we just rocked up. We are um, here today, obviously, but um, we just rocked up. We've got the key safes out and things like that. Yeah. Um, but if guests turn up, you need someone for that key. Yeah, we, we, we've been using, uh, well, I've been using a company called Keynest. And what Keynest do? Well, have you ever used Keynest? I haven't, no. Okay. I've heard so, about them, so Keynest are a company where they, they, it's like Uber, where Uber, but they drop keys off and you can pick them up. And it's, it's okay, but it, the worst thing is when you physically have to go and let them in every time. I was time. just going to say, I stayed in an apartment in Liverpool and yeah. I recently were, I have to go through an, uh, a news agent, yeah. click keys, and then go to the apartment and it's like, oh, I'll just stay in a room. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. The best system is to just have a key safe. Um, and we've literally just 
what well, if you say today, yeah. 15 pounds from Argos, or I think we, we paid 16 pounds from Screwfix. Screwfix, yeah. And we're going to put up the key safe there, uh, but up until now we've been using Keynest. So basically, secured the deal, got the keys. I was so excited, I just put it on booking.com and Airbnb and stuff really fast in a bit of a rush. Um, started getting bookings coming in, I was like, yes, it, it's worked! You know, got a, called a cleaner, she said, yep, yeah, we've got that worked out. Um, I, was, I was really excited, and then I was so excited, I just booked a spontaneous um, vacation to Dubai. Spent two weeks in Dubai, which I had to kind of keep a little bit on the low, because I didn't want everybody to know I was in Dubai, um, because then it would kind of ruin the, the finale of the challenge. But there was a few problems. I told you about some yeah. of the challenges. So we even had one, I was getting so many bookings, I was so excited because it's December time. December's like a crazy good month for service accommodation. But my first booking arrived and could not get in. Could not get in access. The cleaner wasn't here. The, the, it, it was just terrible. So while I'm in Dubai, I know mean, you've probably seen the video where I'm in the beach getting bookings, it's great. Actually, I spent about three hours on the phone, yeah. like going like, my goodness, get here and get that and all that. So I think systems are just so important. Yeah. Good systems, good people. And, and of course, Samuel Leeds can use his power team, but Lucas Ruby, I was having to get my network, get my system starting from scratch. Normally, Samuel Leeds, I'll get a property deal, I'll be the entrepreneur, but then as soon as I've found it and secured the deal, I'll just go and pass it over to my team. So setting up the systems from scratch, it's very doable, but it was, it was really tricky. Some of the, uh, the questions I get asked loads is how you go about finding the cleaners. How yes. do you find the cleaners in the first place? Um, just Google. Google, yeah. yeah. Just Google. That's what I do. Oh. Or, or if you know people that have got service accommodation problems near it, ask them. Yeah, that's fine. Because you, you, you don't just need someone to clean, you need someone to just really own it understands what's happening, turn the lights off if the idiot and her guests have left the lights on, look at the online management system of the calendar and be able to be aware when they go in, when they go out, they really need to just own it, um, and that way it really is completely passive. Yep. Should we answer some of the questions that people have actually asked? Yes. I hope this has been interesting so far, but um, Lucas, please walk us through your cold, cool pitch to the letting agent. Very simple, I just found the letting agent and I'll just say, um, hi, I've seen that you've got a couple of apartments on, are they still available? Yes, they are. Fantastic, well my name's uh, Lucas Ruby. Cool, same with these. And I'm actually, um, I, I have a corporate letter agreements. Yeah. So I don't know if the landlord would be open to a guaranteed rent, I would say a three to five year period. We can certainly ask that question. Great, and, and we do like a corporate letter, so I'd move in my guests. Uh, I'd be using a, a, a booking.com service department, and um, yeah, is that something that they'd be open with? Great. Okay, that's that, that was probably the, the, the most terribly worded. Um, <laughs> no, but, okay, it just, but it's okay, it's okay. It's not about being like Mr. Smooth. You know, do not go in as if you're going to rent it yourself and then go, actually, by the way, I've, uh, I've got another idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just be like, I'd rather be a mumbling, bumbling idiot, yeah. but just put all my cards on the table. You know, yeah. and, and if they go, what do you mean? I'll just say, yeah, I'll be putting it on booking.com, Airbnb. But it's best to be upfront from the front, yeah. from the offset, because if you build any relationship on mistrust, yeah, it's not gonna. And if you, if yeah, if you just tell them everything upfront and they're like, oh no, you've lost 30 seconds of your life. There's a million other agents to phone, but if you ring up and just totally honest, bit of a mumbling, mumbling idiot, but tell them exactly what you're planning on doing. If they're okay with that, sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, we've done, we've done that before. Like this particular um, agent, she was reasonably familiar with it. She was like, oh, yeah. booking.com, yeah. So you break, you get in with the right agent. It's, it, property business is a people business. It's not about the property, it's about getting with the right people and then the, and then the deals will come. Mm, I believe that, yeah. Uh, the other thing I'll say about serviced accommodation is, it is um, some months will do better than others. So some months will do really well. Like January is the quietest month. So right now, I could be th looking, at, looking at my bookings thinking, oh my goodness. I mean, I know we've got bookings now coming in, but oh my goodness, what's going on? But, but you need to look at it over a 12 month period. So when people say to me, what exactly is your profit gonna be on, the service to, uh, on, on these two apartments? I don't know exactly. I can give you the rough figures. You've seen everything. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you're quite, he's Mr. Conservative. So Massively. I, I'm, I'm renting them out for between 100, like 100 is the minimum, um, but for between 100 and then right up to, believe it, like 300 a night for this one. This is a big, massive penthouse. You, it's got four bedrooms, 
So, you know, on average, I'd say probably about 150 pounds per night per apartment. Um, one of them's a two bed apartment. This was a four bed penthouse. It's absolutely, I'm looking out. I can see a balcony and all the views right now. I'll give you a little tour shortly. Um, so even with, I think Sheffield's the average occupancy rate is around about 80%. So if you have an 80% occupancy rate with those kind of um, figures, you've got a lot, a big pie to play with and cut up with. I'm paying the landlord 650 pounds per month for the two bed and then I'm paying 12.50 per month for this penthouse. So my expected profit is gonna be around about a thousand pounds for the downstairs, for the downstairs one, which is a two bed apartment. For this one, I think maybe 1,500 pounds, approximately. So I would expect to be making um, two and a half thousand pounds a month over the year. January is gonna be a bit quieter. January I might only make 500 pounds per apartment. You know, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm making money. I've got yeah. money coming in. I've got guests staying tonight, so that they'll be here shortly. Um, when sourcing the deals, what was the cost of getting compliant factors into it? Um, or was this done at a later date? No, before I did my challenge, I set up a bank account. I set up a compliance sourcing company. You need to get this guy <laughs> is writing a book. And the book is called, I hope you don't mind saying this. It's called Whatever It Takes, because he has done whatever it needs to be taken if that even makes sense. It makes sense, but... Well, you understand what I mean. And, um, and, and Alistair's making, like, 30 grand plus a month. Yeah. Three, zero, 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 zero a month in profits a month. Um, and in your book, yeah. where you can explain your story and mm -hmm. how you went from a sceptical Scotsman yeah, to a yeah. successful, happy... Yeah. The, the best thing is not his money, it's the smile on his face because he was so miserable when we first met. I was a little bit, I must admit. <laughs> happy investor, but in that book you talk all about compliance, don't you? Yes, yes, but you're talking good. about £1,200 to get insurance, to get registered with an ombudsman or a redress scheme. Yeah. You're talking about £1,200, which will be paid for within half a deal, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. hope that makes sense. Um, Kaya. Carl Harrison, uh, this is a good question. If you were to continue beyond the one week, would you continue the strategy you'd started or consider other options? Well, um, eight grand in a week's not bad. I would yeah. continue that. Eight grand, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably carry on doing that. What research did you do in calculating potential revenue for serviced accommodation apartments? Really good question. You know what, a lot of people, I see so many motivated idiots doing serviced accommodation, and they get so burned. There's a lot that can go wrong, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah you can get the wrong area. You can get the wrong timing. You cannot do the legality checks. You can make, you cannot have good systems in place. There's so much that can go wrong. Wherever there's high reward, i.e., very little money down, thousands of pounds a month, ping. There's always there's always a flip side. And with service accommodation, the flip side is making sure that you have the you need to be pretty damn sure. Even me. Doing the challenge, I got a bit stuck and a bit stumped because I'm so used to my team doing it. <laughs> Even though I've done it and I know it, so you know how that I know the area. You you can you can check you can yeah. you can check on like uh, Airbnb on Airbnb. You can see the average occupancy rate for hotels. You can actually check by looking to trying to book hotels mm -hmm. and seeing how busy they are. Um, you can also speak to other investors that are doing it. Um, I mean. What, what, the, the way I do it is very similar. So you can go onto all these sites, booking.com, Airbnb, and you can check other people's properties and see how occupied they are. Yeah. So see if you can try and book on for next month or next week, see how busy things are. You get a, a, a good, really good estimation on how much people are getting per room per night. Um, speak to lots of service accommodation agents. There is loads. Like in Sheffield, there's loads of agents which will manage SA for Sheffield's you. Sheffield's not even the best area. Like no, everyone's there's... desperate. Everyone's desperate to know the lady, the uh, agent. Uh, 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 but the thing is, the thing is, and people have got to hunt the gun and all that, but she's my friend. Yeah. And, and she, if you if you track her down, do you know what she'll say? She'll say, have you done Samuel Leeds' training on service accommodation? Yes. Are you an academy member? And if you go, uh, 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 she ain't going to be interested because, no. because it's not good for anyone. Because no. if, you, if you take on a property um, for service accommodation, but you're, you don't know what you're doing, what's going to happen is it's not going to make you profit, so you're a loser. <laughs> and then the agent, or the landlord is not going. You're not going to have to pay their rent, and then they're going to be really annoyed, and then you're a loser. It's going to end up giving people like us a bad yeah. name, and it's, you're going to you're going to you're going to not not get correct permission from the mortgage company. You're not going to check with the lease, and you're not going to be able to get correct permission with the lease. It's just going to be. Do you know a common problem I hear about loads is where. 
people that are not really well educated about rent to rent, they go in, they get an apartment, loving it, it's working, and then the landlord comes in and says, actually, you've not got permission to do that. Yeah. And they take the keys back. Yeah. You've or the landlord problem. gets jealous. Yeah. Or the landlord doesn't know, and the agent has gone, yeah, 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 he's fine with it, because they want their quick fee. Yeah, yeah. But then when the landlord finds out he's not happy, <laughs> just, yeah. just get educated. But that, hopefully that kind of answers your question. Um, okay, Adam Smith. Adam Smith is always commenting things like this, and to be honest, yeah. Um, why didn't you use a person with no property knowledge at all? Maybe I should have used him. Maybe next time. What, the reason I didn't was because it would have been a really boring documentary. <laughs> because if we, we just filmed your life, it would be pretty boring. So that's why I did it with me. Well, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a good documentary. But if you want to do that, see it. But if you want to do that, then why don't you just go and film that? Like you can do that. Yeah. You know. Anyway, uh, my husband watched the documentary and he's still skeptical. That's fine. He's still skeptical. Yeah, you know, there's some people. It's like, <laughs> to be honest, I, I was I was skeptical Fair when enough. I started in my journey. So I assume. Know. Wait, I'm just reading what's said. Okay. You went through some training. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Realistically, how much education does it take for one to get to the level of proficiency you displayed in those seven days? It was a real touch, and it was a real touch. You know, at one point, here he's of the opinion a real newbie could not get those results, especially when convincing people to deal with you first time around. Yeah, I spent ten years getting experience, and I've spent about three quarters of a million getting trained. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, I don't know how else to answer that question. But you haven't yeah. spent that much. <laughs> He's been in the game 12 months, yeah. and you spent like, what, 12 grand? Uh, actually, probably about 20, because I've done a lot of training as well. All right, you spent 12 grand with me. Good how did the 12 grand with me compared to the 8 grand with all the people? <laughs> Phenomenal. Man. Yeah, okay. So, so, okay, so how much, maybe, if you want to get to his result, although bear in mind, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm making millions. He's making 30 grand a month, yeah. and you spent 12 grand, yeah. certainly with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's phenomenal. Um, just, just get trained. But yeah, of course you need training. Of course you do. If you took a brand new dude with no money and filmed him for a week, it was boring. It was well, why not just go and film a homeless person for a week? Because yeah. it would be very, it would, it would look quite similar. So of course you need the knowledge. You need the knowledge. But wasn't the whole point of the task was somebody with the knowledge? Yes. Start again from zero with nothing apart from the knowledge. Again, someone just said, "Do you think you would have successfully completed the challenge if you'd have had no property knowledge or experience?" I think some people just miss the point. Should we just move on? Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Yeah. Okay. Alistair Cunningham! He said... Did I comment? Yeah. Alistair Cunningham. I don't know if you can see that. It's not very clear. Oh, there you are. There you go. Uh, he said, this is a great idea. I can't wait for this. Oh. He, was, he said he can't wait for this and he's, he's in it. So... <laughs> Anyway, um, I'd love some details on how you built your list for deal sourcing and converted the deals into sales. Okay, um, what did I do for that? I just literally went down to anything I could go to. I, I was searching on Google, firstly, for business networking events, property networking events. I thought there was loads, there's not that many. No, there's not. There's not that many. There's not at all. Um, but anyway, there are. There's like BNI, there's 4N, there's Bob Club, there's business networking groups, they're cool. Then there's property networking groups like Penn, for instance, Property Investors Network. You run the Property Investors Circle. Yeah. They property meet, property hub. There are these things that do exist. So what I did was I just went online, I found whatever I could find where I knew there was going to be people or property investors, went there, and. Um, and then they just built relationships and just got talking to people. So, like, this will be an example. Hey, great to meet you. I'm Lucas. Hey, Lucas. I'm Steve. So, uh, what's your property strategy? Why are you here? Uh, I've just come to... Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's awesome. Fantastic. Um, build relationship. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a deal source. I've got some property deals available in Sheffield. Oh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and then I'm going to walk away while the conversation's on high. Because yeah. there's nothing worse than being desperate than being like, So, would you like to buy one? Here's my card. Here's my card. <laughs> He's just going to back right up. So I'll tell him what I do, I'll get him interested, and then I'll walk up, leave the conversation on a high, come back to him a bit later, you know, oh actually the sale I've got, do you know, not, not do you, yeah. do you want, do you know, any, it's just, you know what, part of it is sales skills, and um, you know, who do you know, oh actually I might be interested in myself, cool, or well, do you want me to drop you the details over by email, sure, yeah. boom, I've got his details, that's one hot person. And then I'm just going around building my list like that. I went to one networking event, um, I left, 
I left with 27 details of people. Yeah. 27. And I went to more than one so over the week. So that's how I did it. And also some of the deals that I sold, I sold them via not people that I met, but they were like, oh, I know someone that might be interested and passed me to someone else. And I was just like a maverick on the phone. What do you, you, the thing is, right, we're building, building lists. I, I do this regular. I have a, I have a, a step-by-step system for doing this. But most people network wrong. They do it completely wrong. No, no. Like what you just said, they're instantly trying to sell. Uh, I, I completely agree with the way you do it. That's how I do it. Someone said, how did you handle estate agent's questions when setting up the rent-to-rent SA apartments? I didn't handle, I just, I just told them the truth. Be honest. Yeah, just told them it can be truth. Did you have to secure the deals without having to show proof of funds? Cool. Yeah, um, so the estate agent, I think in a video actually, I showed in a video on this while I was doing it. But the estate agent said to me, I can put forward your offer, but first I need to see your proof of funds. And I said, well, are they going to accept my offer? Yeah. Because I'm a busy man and I don't really want to, like, send you my solicitors and my this and my that and my that if they're just going to turn around and say no. And then she went, oh, no, 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 I mean, yeah. And then she quickly changed her tune. And then she came back and said, yeah, they've accepted your offer. Can I please have your documents? Then I went, no problem. I'll get them as soon as I can for you. Should send them tomorrow. Chippy, 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 chippy. Emailed the details out, sold the deal. And then I said to him, have you got your documents? He said, yes. I then got them off him, forwarded them to the agent, hooked the two together and took my fee in the middle. Boom, shut up, boom, oh, yeah. That's it, right? Easy done, yeah. No problem. So thank you for the question though, um, Amy Keen. How did you work out your sourcing fee of two and a half thousand pounds? Supply and demand. Yeah, 100%. You know, there's no magic. Some people try and, some people try and pretend that it, there's some like magic oh. formula. No, there's not. It's just a case of, this is the deal. How many people are going to want this? If you know that the deal is going to be really popular, you're going to be able to sell it like that and people are going to come queuing up, you just charge what you think you can charge. Because you don't decide who, who you don't decide, they decide how much they're willing to pay. So you need to just think, how much? And you just got to gauge it right, it comes from experience. But the average sourcing fee will sell between about two and five grand. Yeah, 100%. That's a question I get all the time, actually. Um, yep. How do you come up with your, uh, your sourcing fee? Yep. Uh, there's no algorithm, it's just... Uh... What are the main legalities of setting up service accommodation? You know what, I could, this is going to be a long, long video if I go into that. So, the main things, lease, the lease, the mortgage, permission from the landlord, correct contracts. Yeah. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, Lee Horton. If oh, this is another one. If you are not able to dedicate the time you had and were working a job like eight to six during the challenge, how would you have done it then? I would have just taken a week off work. Yeah. Like. That's what I feel about. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, no, no, no. The thing is, I achieved financial freedom in seven days. Yeah. You might have to work eight hours a day, or nine hours, or ten hours a day, Monday through Friday. But you've still got a lot of time left, mm -hmm. so maybe it would take you, maybe maybe it take you three weeks. We'll just take a week off work. Like you can either find excuses or you can find reasons why to do something. Uh, or you can use weekends, Saturdays, yes. Sundays. Like, yeah, serious. Uh, there's ways around doing everything if you guys really want to do it. Believe me. Well, I think the challenge would have been a bigger challenge if it had been done in a different market marketplace, one that you didn't already have the knowledge in. Yeah, maybe. But property is what I know. So, maybe I would have failed. Were you most nervous on day one or day six? Oh, good question. Believe it or not, I was most nervous on day minus one. The day before, I was like, oh my goodness, I was shaking. But actually going out and... I actually remember speaking to you at the DFP because we were at the three-day training course at the DFP. Um, and that's when you pulled the name out of the hat. Yeah. And you were literally leaving the DFP yep. that night to go. Yep. And I know then you were a bit nervous. So, I, yeah, a bit so I pulled the I pulled the place out okay. of the hat. And by the way, this this was a random city, like to the oh, point yeah. okay. we had a Facebook live. The guys did it, not my staff. They put the different things in a hat. They were trying to stitch me up because Trevor <laughs> wrote Scotland four times and was putting it in there, hoping I'd go to Scotland. Oh, wow. and, and and then they mixed it up. I came, I took one out. And the others were then looked at, and it was on a Facebook Live, and I got Sheffield, and that same frigging evening, I then drove to Sheffield in my little yellow banger. <laughs> That's funny. All right, what kind of contract did you did you use? I used a corporate let. I used a corporate let contract. Yeah. And believe it or not, the agent had one already. Yeah. So easy. Um, 
People have been asking me about like what deals I sold and stuff and how that eight thousand pound. I don't think in the documentary it was super clear. Okay. So I, I sold three deals. I, I, day one, I just found loads of leads. Day two, I went and viewed loads of properties. We couldn't follow each story of each property, which was disappointing. I might write a book or something on exactly what happened so you can get the full the full story. But I sold three properties. Um, a HMO, a development opportunity, and a rent to SA. And then with that money, I had enough to to get these two properties. Okay. Which is four thousand eight hundred, and the yep. breakdown of that was just deposit up front rent, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little small um, application fee, a little bit of money left over, and I just thought, as I've done it anyway, that's why I gave, I gave the money to um, a homeless charity, and also I bought a phone. The, me the mechanic who saved me, my car broke down. He came, he fixed the car. I said, "How much do I owe you?" And I was thinking, "I ain't got any money to pay you." And I said, "How much do I owe you?" And he looked at me, and he looked at the car, felt sorry for you, and he went. Forget it, mate. <laughs> I was like, thank you so much. I said, I appreciate that. So at the end of the week, I called I called his boss. Yeah. I called the office and I asked to speak to the boss. And uh, I said to him, you know uh, the guy that fixed my car, Tony? I want to leave a good review on your site. I'm really happy. I said, can I get Tony a gift? And he was like, yeah, you can bring him in a, bit, a bottle of beer or something. I said, no. I said, I want him something really special. And he yeah. said, well, I said, his phone's just broken. <coughs> and, and, and I said, what phone was it? He told me it was a Samsung. And the amount of money that it would cost to get me a new phone, I just had left over. So I thought, oh, oh. sorry, it was really sweet. Anyway, um, yeah. it was a nice touch giving the money to the uh, homeless charity as well. Man. Yeah, really thanks, man. How did you sell the deals to investors at the property event? I didn't. I didn't sell them at the event. I sold them after. At the event, the purpose was to just build my list, mm -hmm. gain trust, put myself on the map, and then after, when I'm away, email, email out. I really love this. Um, Michelle Ka Mun Wu basically gave like a breakdown of the rent to SA. That looks like, I don't know where you got that from, but that look, that's like very much bang on. So this is just a breakdown of her predictions of how much I'd be making for the rent to SA, which works out to be like 2,600, which is very, very close. Now, as I said before, until you can look at it in an, over a 12 month period, you don't know for sure, it's only predictions. So yeah. I, can, I can guess. But I can't give you the exact pound. It's, it's a business. It, yeah. It's a business plan and cash flow forecast. Or yes, stuff. absolutely. Yeah, what that um, sort of emphasis on is you've got to take it seriously. Yeah. And you've got to plan properly. Someone said, uh, Robert Gregory, what and how did he work on his mindset when starting out to get belief and focus? Dude, that's just what I do. I've spent 10 years investing in myself and personal development. I'm a focused kind of person. But yeah, it was tough. It was, it was nerve wracking. Um, but I'm not afraid to just step out and look stupid. Um, so, do you want, should we show them around? Yeah, man, let's show them around. And maybe the guests are due, what time are the guests due? I think two to three o'clock, between two and three. So, so while soon. we're showing you around, the guests might come. We might hang around for them just to, so you can meet the guests if they'll be on camera. Yeah. I'll have to persuade them. Um, but we've got a full house, a full house. And, and we've got a lot of bookings in. So it's a real success overall. And I just want a massive, Thank you guys for supporting me and for following the challenge. If you guys have like 15,000 views, I know I saw 15,000 views. If, if me doing that for a week has been able to inspire people and open people's mindset up and change their perspective, then then that was a real victory for me. I think so. And any profits that I make from, from these properties, I'm putting them to charity. Are you in there? Yeah, yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, I'm putting them to charity. So, all right, let's do a little look around. So, this is the, uh, the like lounge kind of area of the penthouse, which is beautiful. Balcony right here, so nice. Gorgeous. Anyway, um, I won't show you every single bedroom, but you can kind of get the gist. This is what all the bedrooms sort of look like. Um, Beautiful. I said I wouldn't show you every bedroom. Maybe I will. <laughs> have you, where are the key safes and stuff? Uh, they're outside. Um, I'll right. see them when we go outside. We'll put them up now. Look at Samuel drilling a hole. It's not usually the kind of thing that I uh, <laughs> typically do. Go on, give it some whirly. So on. we're creating some uh, sticky labels to put on the key safe so that they know which one's which. And I think our guests might have arrived. Hello. Hey, how's it going? 
This is uh, Alistair, by the way. Hey, you are right. Alistair is the cleaner, and uh, also he, he's also actually documenting everything, so I hope you don't mind him following me around with a Is that right? Gonna... Uh, we came Manchester, these two are up from North oh, Wales. Oh, wow. Now this needs a wiggle or something. There we go. So when, you've, uh, when you leave, mm -hmm. if you could um, put the keys, which I'll give you, in here, yeah. Yeah. what you need to do, you just pull the blackening, yeah. put it in, and then mix the coder. Okay. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. Right. I'll just make sure everything's okay. Here we then we'll leave you in case. It's warm. <laughs> is it okay for you guys? Yeah, yeah. it's really nice. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Any issues? Just give us a call and I'll leave you the keys. Okay. Alright, thanks so much. Oh, the closest shop is. Well, we're right near Sheffield City Centre, so yeah. there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot around, so I wouldn't really have okay. If you've got Google, just follow yeah, yeah, just Google it. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. You know what? Property investing is a business. These guys here, they're my customers. Mm -hmm. This house is my product. Don't never forget that. Sometimes it's easy to think, I just want to make quick money, quick money. No, you want to add value. I've helped the developer by giving him a guaranteed rent. I make giving the, these guys a lovely evening. You know, it's about adding value and then the money follows. Also, a lot of people asking like what kind of contracts I used. Um, so I'll show you exactly what I used. This is a company let. Tenancy agreement, company let. We give these out to our advanced students all the time. Um, but anyway, that's it. Easy peasy. Ruby's Place and Lucas Penthouse, baby. And the reason I've done that, we've got different key codes because otherwise they might accidentally stay in the penthouse. So they'll get emailed they'll get emailed when they book on the code. When the cleaners come in, they can just change it um, every so often or every time. Different investors, are, some people get really hung up. But here's my sales pitch. If you would like to come and stay here, at, I'd recommend Lucas Penthouse or Ruby Apartment. I'm gonna put a link below so you can come and stay in my service accommodation and actually see firsthand exactly what it's like, what the setup is. You may even meet the cleaner. And uh, it would also mean I'll get more bookings. So win-win, right? No, come and stay. I'd love to, I'd love to have you as my guest. Good afternoon. You know what I mean? Hey, good to meet you. I'm Samuel. I'm Dan. Good to meet you, Dan. Hi, Jesse, how are you doing? Hi. Lovely to meet you. And you? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, right. so Do you need a help a hand with anything? Oh, it's just this, thank you. Oh. So, I'll show you how this, uh, how this works. Uh, Alistair's with us, he's the, uh, the, the cleaner but likes to call himself the maintenance man. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just this one right here. Now we've got the heating on for you so it should be nice and warm. I love it. Oh, good. It's, it's me so I'm gonna have a great time. Awesome, high five, thanks so much. Thank have you. a wonderful stay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And we're just, oh, am I going to see you tomorrow? You no, if you no. could actually leave, if you could just put this back, so you're in Ruby, uh, Ruby's place. Yeah. So if you could just put it back, yeah. uh, and I'll text you the code. Lovely. All right, awesome. Thank you so thanks, much. Thanks, Jesse. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. You too. You too. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, so we've got a whole bunch of six, six happy guests for the night. And now it's all set up, so it's going to be systemized and passive, and I should never need to come here again. Hopefully not. And Alice is upset because I kept calling him the cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they liked it? No, I think they loved it. Mate. What do you think they thought of you following them around with a camera? <laughs> well, they thought the cleaner was following them. <laughs> I called him the cleaner! Do you love the apartments? They're good. Mate. Ever done well there? They're very well. Do you know where to find them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good money, good apartments. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal, man. All that money is going to go to charity as well. That's, that's, that's all, phenomenal. all the profits. So, very good. Peace out. See you next time. See you guys.